this is Virgil Labrador, Editor-in-Chief of Satellite Markets and Research, and we're here at the uh, CASBA Satellite Industry Summit in Singapore uh, with uh, Yvonne Hanre. He's the uh, Chief of the Space Services Department of the Radio Communication Bureau of the International Telecommunications Union, which ITU for short. Uh, and uh, he's here to talk about all the issues uh, that's facing the industry right now. And there's a very hot issue right now, which was just the subject of the um, conference, and uh, Yvonne was one of the speakers. And for the benefit of our uh, viewers who, uh, who are not here, uh, Yvonne, can you give us a brief summary of the, uh, what's the issue uh, with the C-band spectrum uh, between the satellite industry and the mobile operators and the telcos? Well, it's, it, it, it's a big challenge of questions. Mm -hmm. And in your question, I've said the big challenge is uh, to try to, uh, to have a response that would be brief. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I will try to do it. In fact, uh, it's a continuation. This issue, uh, which people are, are, to are talking about and uh, are labeling a C-band issue, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is back to the conference uh, in uh, 2007, the World mm -hmm. Radio Communication Conference in 2007. Just to, to recall that those World Radio Communication Conference are international conference where, in fact, uh, there are discussions uh, on many different issues, but mm -hmm. particularly there uh, on some issue of, of, of uh, allocation of frequency bands to uh, different services mm -hmm. and the sharing conditions of those different services. Right. And it's quite important because uh, at those uh, WRC, at the end of the day, uh, there are agreement on those allocation, and mm -hmm. those allocations are, are, are then part of what we call the radio regulations, mm -hmm. uh, which is an international uh, binding treaty for all administrations. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why it's quite important. Uh, those conferences are quite important. So to come back to the subject, mm -hmm. uh, what I have to be uh, recall is uh, regarding this uh, mobile broadband mm -hmm. uh, and generally spe uh, speaking, before WRC, before, sorry, WRC 7 and particularly between WRC uh, 7 and the next conference that will uh, take place uh, next year in Geneva mm -hmm. uh, in September, in October next year. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we have to recognize that, uh, uh, and in a way, that was one of the questions uh, in the panel today, just to say to people how many of you have, have a cell phone, mm -hmm. uh, an iPhone or, right. or, or, or whatever, and it's true that everybody got one, right. and we have to recognize that there have been a tremendous growth right. in demand for mobile broadband, and particularly uh, right. since WRC 07. And then, uh, in order to respond uh, to this tremendous growth, definitely uh, there is one method that has been agreed by the ITU mm -hmm. uh, back in 2000, uh, which is called the IMT, mm -hmm. International Mobile Telecommunications, also uh, uh, the acronym itself uh, that doesn't mean all of those uh, services and applications that right now are with broadband, but very, very often we call it as IMT. Right. And it's true that uh, IMT has been seen as the main uh, delivery method for wide area mobile broadband applications. Right. And so what is needed at a uh, world level, it's an harmonized worldwide, worldwide bounce which is uh, desirable for global roaming and also to benefit for the economic of scales. Right. So the, the, this is the issue uh, as seen from the, uh, from the broadband and mobile subscriptions have increased during the last years. Right. Mobile penetration also in all countries and right. particularly in those countries right. of Asia Pacific have increased. Right. And uh, well, come, come to, <laughs> to, right. the, to the bottleneck, right. uh, there is a need to have more spectrum in order to respond to these uh, requirements. Right. There are some uh, battle regarding uh, the amount of spectrum or bandwidth that right. would be required right. between the mobile broadband community, right. the satellite community, and everybody. However, right. putting that aside, they right. have to decide about it. It's right. true that uh, for those uh, future IMT spectrum, uh, there is a need for m new bands. Right. And then uh, it's true that uh, uh, today, if right. you look to the allocations of all services on all bands, right. It's busy everywhere. Right. And so you have to find some specific bands. Right. And at the end of the day, it would mean also that you would have to share with some existing bands. And right. within all of the bands uh, that the uh, broadband community was looking for, one seems to be of particular interest. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Uh, uh, and that was the famous C band. Right. And the problem is that C band has been a band uh, which has been allocated uh, to the satellite uh, services since the very beginning of the satellite business back in the 70s, right. uh, last century, right. and that has been usually uh, usually used by satellite as it was the first band used because of many advantages, particularly for rain attenuation right. and many other uh, right. advantages. Right. And so uh, it's true that uh, the satellite uh, community is taking that as a direct attack right. uh, by, by, by the broadband community to take some part of the bounce. However, at some stage we could say, okay, uh, the, the, the game, in fact, all of those conferences mm -hmm. uh, is with a new technology, with the advanced technology at some stage. Right. Uh, this would enable, uh, I would say, all service to, uh, to be together, to work together, to be shared. Right. And so, since uh, uh, for the 2007 conference, right. and then since 2007, there have been a certain number of, um, of, of sharing studies. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of those sharing studies uh, today, which are not completely yet completed, right. uh, because there are still important meetings uh, at the ITU level in order to prepare what could be some of common views, if mm -hmm. possible, mm -hmm. that will take place in July this year. And, and it's true that uh, then there will be time uh, between uh, July next year, uh, sorry, uh, July this year, and uh, the conference itself for anybody to come with his own uh, proposal for the conference. What happened yeah. is that for the preparation uh, of any conference, right. uh, there is uh, what we call CPM, right. which is a conference preparatory meeting right. for which a report is prepared right. to, to provide all of the technical background uh, right. regarding the uh, the agenda item of the conference. Right. And uh, one of the agenda item, and I should have said that from the very beginning because mm -hmm. it's important, mm -hmm. because people will retain certainly uh, this agenda item. Right. Everybody is talking about agenda item 1.1. .1. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be mysterious for people, right. but it's just because it's the, it's the first agenda item right. uh, of, of, of the conference that have many, many different agenda items on uh -huh. many different services. Right. But uh, this uh, agenda item 1.1 mm -hmm. said in particularly uh, to consider additional spectrum allocation to mobile service on a primary basis and identification right. of additional frequency band for IMT. Right. So the, the, this is in fact the reason why people are, are, are studying, have been right. studying for the last four years right. in order to take a decision for new allocation for IMT. Right. Now, uh, the, as, as you said, uh, Yvonne, the satellite industry has been using C-band for since the beginning, Absolutely. since the beginning, uh, the first satellite, commercial satellite yeah. uh, launched by Intelsat was C-band satellites. Yes. And then today we heard a presentation from Euroconsult that it's used for many different applications. It's used in broadcasting and uh, rural telephony and other stuff here in uh, Southeast Asia, and it will cost billions to uh, shift them to another spectrum. So how does that work? You know, spectrum technically cannot be shared, right? You either take it from here to give it to another uh, person, right? Mm -hmm. like, like when ITU licenses uh, orbital slots, there's only one company that gets one slot, right? Or one country. How does that work? The sharing, could you? Uh, well, uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, ju just to come back on, on some of the issue, uh, the, the ITU by itself is not, uh, in a way, providing one position to the country. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it in fact, any country could choose any orbital position mm -hmm. uh, in some frequency bands. It's true that, well, there is always exception. There are some plants right. uh, which has been uh, agreed by the community, mm -hmm. which is given to each country one orbital position mm -hmm. and one part of the o of frequencies with a national coverage. So this is something which is a little apart. Right. And I would say what we're talking now, uh, when we were talking about C-band, mm -hmm. are what we call uh, un unplanned services band mm -hmm. and so in that particular case it's the country that is in fact chosen uh, which, which in fact choose uh, the best orbital position mm -hmm. in order to offer the service mm -hmm. and it's true that what happened is that 
the uh, regulation said that whenever you choose any position uh, using uh, some frequencies, you have to coordinate or you have to discuss with anybody which is before you right. and with which you could, over, you could have overlap of frequency band and risk of interference. And oh. in a way, uh, the, the sharing is just there to avoid this risk of interference. Right. What happened also is that beyond that, there is possibility of sharing some services. Mm -hmm. I would say today, uh, mm -hmm. in the C-band, to take the example of C-band, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, part of the C-band which is given to fixed satellite service, mm -hmm. but which is also given to the fixed service. And in a way, uh, those two are sharing. And they are sharing uh, based on some uh, power flux density limit, for mm -hmm. example, from the right. satellite or a ERP from, uh, uh, from, uh, from the uh, uh, fixed stations, mm -hmm. well, which in fact permit to both services to operate without problem and to both services to, uh, to coexist. Right. So uh, uh, based on that, uh, in a way, uh, th well, th this is in fact what we call sharing, mm -hmm. uh, which could be defined uh, through uh, criteria during conference mm -hmm. for which you don't, you don't have any need uh, to discuss or for which because uh, those criteria could not be determined, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to have a bilateral discussion to do it. <laughs> and uh, the issue uh, which is at stake now uh, regarding the C-band mm -hmm. is that in fact uh, we, are we are talking about a sharing between the fixed satellite service mm -hmm. and broadband application mm -hmm. and so far uh, the only solution uh, that have uh, been found in order for both services to coexist mm -hmm. would be an um, uh, area around uh, the earth station where uh, there won't be any possibility uh, in a way, uh, to uh, to operate uh, one of the service, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, to operate the broadband services, or uh, so in a way, uh, some area around the broadband services right. where it won't be uh, possible to operate a station. So, so it's kind of like. Uh some areas will be served by satellite and some will be served by the mobile or the telcos? Well, uh, this is something that might, uh, might be uh, workable. Mm -hmm. However, here we are talking about two ubiquitous uh, services, right. which means that we don't know at all where those other stations will be. Right. Because we can talk, uh, we are talking about uh, visa type of uh, of services or right. even TV Aero right. that could be anywhere. Right. And for the mobile broadband, uh, well, we are talking also about those mobile broadband that could be anywhere in a country. Right. So it means that it would be uh, impossible, uh, in a way, to share on this uh, geographical discrimination basis. Mm -hmm. And so that's the reason why uh, at at this stage uh, there is difficulty right. uh, in the discussion because right. it's not possible to share uh, based on whatever has been uh, right. so far uh, right. uh, studied. I, thi I think the, the, f the fear from the satellite industry is they already have the C-band, they're using it, and it might be taken away from them. They have now they have to find new spectrum, new bandwidth. Uh, what, what are your, uh, re what's your reaction to that? Well, uh, absolutely, because uh, it's true that on the paper, we, we, we could have, uh, in a way, the two services mm -hmm. at the international level which are authorized, and mm -hmm. then it could be decided that, uh, in a way, it's up to the uh, administration or country to decide what to do uh, on their own territories. Right. I think that just, just, just to, to have in mind, uh, this international treaty uh, which uh, come at the end of those WRC mm -hmm. is, is just in fact something, it, it just some agreement that will enable some services uh, to be operated. And then it's true that it's at, it, it is at the national level, the prerogative of any country mm -hmm. to decide that I would operate this service or this service. Right. As it has been mentioned uh, during the discussion, uh, for example, um, uh, at CASBA, uh, in uh, Korea and uh, in Japan, there are part of the C-band mm -hmm. which nationally uh, right. are not uh, authorized for uh, satellite within the country. Right. So it's true that here they could use it for right. what a w w whatever other services. Right. But it's true also that in many other countries, it's the contrary. Right. And uh, what, what, what is quite important here is this uh, globalization, is this global approach right. that 
the uh, mobile broadband spectrum is looking for, right. but that uh, the space industry is looking for also. Right. Well, this is a really important issue. Uh, the next WRC, which is the World Radio uh, Communications mm -hmm. uh, Congress, uh, where they uh, enact all these policies, will be next year. Uh, what month will be? October? Uh, it will be in October next 2015 year in Geneva, in Geneva. For four weeks. Right. Now, I know uh, the ITU is supposed to be neutral on this. You're trying to uh, find a way to provide the spectrum and mm -hmm. utilize it for the for everybody's use, right? For and especially mobile broadband. But wh what do you really feel, Yvonne? <laughs> Are you optimistic? Can can because there's uh, there's uh, there was a panelist earlier who said there's it can't be shared. Spectrum can't be shared. So, what do you really feel? Do you think there is? Uh, are you optimistic about coming to a sharing agreement? Um, well, w w when you were saying the ITU, and uh, I I I just to be clear, I am from the ITU secretariat. Right. Uh, to a certain extent, I'm working uh, as an international civil servant within the ITU in order mm -hmm. to, to implement whatever decisions which are taken by administration mm -hmm. uh, during those conferences. Right. And uh, uh, very often when we are referring to the ITU, uh, well, we are ref referring to our stakeholders, right. which, which are the 193 uh, countries uh, which are part of the ITU and which are also the more than uh, uh, 700 uh, uh, ITUR sector members, which are which are the industry, for example, including which which are working on all of those um, uh, studies that I were. Uh, we were talking about, and uh, through the administration, which are taking the decision. So it, the ITU, at the end of the day, that will take the decision, but the ITU will be, uh, in a way, you, uh, indirectly, uh, as representative of your country uh, at, at those conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, uh, it's true that uh, uh, so far uh, we may be optimistic Mm -hmm. uh, just because uh, the study period uh, is not completely finished. As I mentioned, there is one group which is preparing one part of this report for the conference preparatory meeting, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which will meet in uh, July. And the conference preparatory meeting will take place uh, itself uh, sometime at the beginning of next year to prepare a report to the conference that would provide all of the technical background for any of the agenda items, including this agenda item 1.1 uh, about finding more bound for the broadband application that will be discussed at the conference. Right. But it's just one part, a uh, quite important part uh, for the preparation of the conference, because then it will be up to all administrations to come with proposal to the conference and uh, preferably uh, a proposal that could be grouped uh, under r some uh, regional uh, uh, organizations and could be presented by more than one. And so, okay, at this stage, uh, it's clear that there will be some proposal by some administration that would propose some potential bounds for extending those broadband application without quoting a, uh, a C band, mm -hmm. which might have even in their proposal uh, don't touch to C band. That would certainly be said in a more politically correct means right. way, but there will be also certainly proposal by administration that could say, well, uh, uh, we could have uh, in C band and maybe not in all C band, but in some part of the C band, uh, some possibility uh, for, for the sharing to occur. Right. And so it will be up to the conference to decide. Right. Uh, it's very difficult uh, now, one year yeah, before the conference, it's a little uh, reading in a crystal ball, right. uh, to, find a, to, to say what will be, uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, the solutions. Right. In, at WRC 07, mm -hmm. uh, the, same, the same issue was there. Right. And it came at the end that uh, there were no allocation as such uh, in the table of frequency allocation, right. but there have been some footnotes to this table of, of allocation right. in which, in fact, some administration uh, indicated that they might use some part of those frequency mm -hmm. for IMT. Right. So uh, it might be one of the solution. It might be also that at the end of the day, everybody recognize that those C-band has to be protected and nothing, nothing will be done. Right. Um, to a certain extent, I hope uh, that the solution will not touch too much about the C-band right. uh, for satellite. Right. Uh, 
maybe because I've been working for the last 25 or 30 years in the satellite uh, industry and environment. Right. And, and also uh, because I think that it's important uh, it's important for the satellite uh, industry and for the future of satellite that uh, they, uh, that uh, many of those bands and particularly C band in which there are very important services could be secure in the long term. Right. Coming back on one of your uh, questions or remarks at mm -hmm. the beginning of the interview, mm -hmm. it's true that uh, in a way to move whatever services that exist now in even some little part of the C band to any of the bands, right. firstly would be, well, where? Right. Uh, because there is congestion in, in right. many of the bands, right. and, and, and it will uh, also cost uh, 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 certainly uh, billions of dollars right. in terms of all of those terminals uh, that will have to be reviewed. It could have also some uh, severe impact on the service itself during this period. Right. So um, it's just an hypothesis that uh, I, can, I could not imagine at that stage. Right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot more uh, discussions go going uh, forward. Uh, we're still uh, more than a year away from uh, WRC, and I hope this is resolved. And uh, we will be reporting uh, this very important issue for the satellite industry in uh, satellite markets and research at www.satellitemarkets.com.